Hello everyone, this is Kathy from Divine Debut. Welcome, welcome to my channel. Alright, oh, hope everyone is really well. Um, today is actually the 25th of July 2018 and this reading is for all signs, all signs, love in general. I'm just looking into the energies of the eclipse we're already like we're two days away from the big the very very strong energetically full moon lunar eclipse and that's why I'm doing this reading I want to see what this eclipse roughly pertains to and how the energies are showing up I'm sure that a lot of you have heard that there are very difficult aspects, astrologically speaking, with this lunar eclipse. It is a very, very, very life-changing time. For those of you that have got your birthdays on or around today, tomorrow, the next few days, happy birthday, but do know that your next year is going to be full of change that's just the way it works okay now I am using the Albano weight tarot because I love it the colors are amazing I'm doing a full reading with Sabilis and I will be taking Doreen Virtue one card for each sign so do stay till the end because I will be taking one Doreen Virtue card in relation to love for each and every sign. I am also going to take one card from the Mythic Oracle. As you can see, it's a new deck that I have. Absolutely love this deck, right? It's It says of the ancient Greek pantheon, and it's all about the Greek gods and the heroes. It's really, really great. And I'll just, I just want to tell you, um, okay, who is the, um, where are we, where are we, okay, uh, Carissa Melado is the author, okay, and Michelle Lee Fellin is the illustrator, and it's got a little guidebook, and I will be reading about which card one card as I said I'm taking and I will take this card lastly so for those of you that are interested I will take one last card from the mythic oracle after Dorian Virtue's Romance Angels so Spirit Guides and Angels Archangel Michael what are the energies now, everyone needs to know that eclipse energies can last up to six months. So do know that you can come back to this reading. This reading is not only for the 27th or 28th, depending on where you are in the world. 27th or 28th of July, 2018. The energies can linger on for six months. But usually, usually what is happening is even before, before or after the eclipse, okay? So let's see. Okay, in the now position, we have the world card. The challenge position is the four of wands. In the distant past, we have the ten of pentacles. In the recent past, we have the Ten of Cups. Crowning the reading is the Two of Cups. Very interesting. In the near future, we have the Queen of Pentacles. And all these cards up to now, except for the Ten of Cups, are in the, in the upright. Now, in the position of us, Right? The individual, 
you who are watching this reading. Um, King of Wands. External to you is the Fool. That is just amazing. Having the World card in the Now position and the Fool in the external. This is like, you know, having a restart. That's what eclipses are all about. They're all about shifting and changing the energies. Hopes and fears, we have the Eight of Pentacles in the reverse. And the outcome card is the Hierophant. Whoa. Let's see what's at the bottom. That is beautiful. Six of Swords. Moving on. This is the general energy. Moving on from trouble to calmer waters. This card is telling me that overall this eclipse is going to be a very positive outcome. Now do know that some of us may be going through major change and it's never easy. Some people are really fixed, especially the fixed signs. They do not like to change. Fixed signs being Aquarius, Leo, Scorpio and Taurus, right? They're the fixed energies and they're the ones that are going to have the hardest time, I would say, especially having the lunar eclipse in Aquarius, right? Now, um, it will be a little bit harder for those signs because they're not used to change. This card here is a very important position. It's the general energy we are moving along. It's time for change. Let's see what's beneath that. And we've got the Eight of Wands. Now, these can be messages, flight travel, romance, love messages, communication through social media, Cupid's arrows. I can see that, you know, there is a lot going on here, especially where emotions are, you know, involved, especially having the Two of Cups in the crowning position. So some of you, and look at this, I mean, this is messages coming in and someone moving on, okay? Shifting, it's a six. Sixes are always a number of balance. Six is also the sign of Virgo. It's the house of Virgo. Now Virgo is where Venus is. Venus speaks of love and money. Okay, so soon Venus will be moving into its own home of Libra, which is the partnership house, and that will be very, very prominent and very beneficial for partnerships and relationships. Let's see what's beneath the Eight of Wands. And we've got the Six of Pentacles. So it's in the upright, another six. Beautiful. So if we count these cards all together, we've got two sixes and an eight. Okay, so 12, 20. Okay, that is the last judgment card. Number 20 is the last judgment, which speaks to me of death and transformation and uprising like anything that has died anything that is outworn that is outdated in our life it is time to move on away from that now some of you may be going through legal issues the six of uh, pentacles does speak of libra for me now this is equilibrium giving and receiving um, coming to an agreement okay especially with the two of cups there as well coming to a, an agreement that we are moving on going on to serene to a serene place to a much more um, balanced place a place that's going to fit us just beautifully now we've got two tens here two tens again equal 20 last judgment keeps coming up and i will take some more cards this is amazing so we have the world card in the now position and the world card is the energy of saturn this is completing a karmic cycle this is a completion just like a full moon is it is a culmination there is a changing of the guards and it is funny because here are the fixed signs that i just mentioned right We've got Aquarius, we've got Taurus, we've got Leo and Scorpio, right? 
so a lot of fixed energy here which is being taken care of okay this cycle has is ending has ended will be ending real soon now we've got Aphrodite let's see if she shows up in the mythic Oracle Aphrodite is the goddess of love this is Venus she is being reborn she's in a womb as you can see and it is the time of Venus in Virgo now Virgo is the sixth house love is love and money is coming into our lives because the house of Virgo is what we do every day what we experience every day Venus is all about what we value what we give value to what is um, special to us um, it's also very physical now Venus is not very happy in Virgo it's in its full position but Venus is Venus right she can be a little bit skeptical just like Virgo is and we've got the Queen of Pentacles here which can be a Virgo individual it can be any other earth sign Virgo Taurus or Capricorn Queen of Pentacles in the near future in the upright beautiful very grounded energy very nurturing and loving this is the mother of earth the mother of earth can be the mother of a family she can be a business owner she is very good with her finances very careful with her finances so she has a lot to give now the mother of earth promises us a lot of stability a lot of material gains which is gorgeous to see for business this is great and it's really good to have her here now she's looking at her pentacle obviously concentrating on finances now in the distant past we've got the ten of pentacles again in the upright so money looks like it's really good tens always break down to a one so for me this is like an ace of pentacles it looks as though and going by intuition I'm saying that what we have started in the distant past is going to flourish it's going to come and we are going through some sort of completion but as I said before there is a restart and there is a lot of promise for financial success right here um, this could be anything to do with the money of the family the business the family of the business all the generations being happy having enough to go around 10 is a beautiful number right so family situations we have here and with the world card here we we could always be speaking of travel anything to do with international matters right now in business of course you could be expanding spreading your wings working through social media through social network to build up your business now the challenge is the four of wands the challenge is to get to that party the challenge is to get to that stability four of wands speaks of what is creative in our life what we have given birth to and what's going to bring in stability for us because wands always speak of our vocation what we do in our career what is what inspires us and what makes us passionate to bring in the money to bring in the stability to bring in the balance four is a beautiful number as well in the tarot and it does speak of stability because if we think of them the major arcana number four is the Emperor right and the Emperor rules okay the Emperor is is someone who you would feel very safe under their wing now this could also speak of a celebration a wedding an engagement a christening anything to do with family situations where there are celebrations and where stability and success comes in now looking above we have the two of cups two of cups is always an agreement it's always two people in a balanced situation being at the same level as you can see even height wise their eyes are at the same level they're on the same page they understand each other fully and they're two halves to a whole now if this is partnership and business then this is fantastic this is what's on your mind this is 
in your crowning, in your crown chakra. This is what you're working towards and this is what's coming in. So again, we have equilibrium, moving forward in some sort of an agreement that's going to be really, really successful. Uh, now, for a lot of you, this can be taking your relationship to the next level. For those of you that have been in a committed partnership or relationship, this is looking absolutely fabulous. Why? Because we've got the Hierophant as the outcome card. And this is, this is tying the knot. This is having the faith, keeping the faith that things will go the way that you that you have imagined, that you have hoped for, that you have wished for, okay? If you are, um, if you are in a situation where um, you're at the, at the stage now where you're just ready to let go, let go of any restrictions and just go with the flow. The Hierophant speaks of commitments, it speaks of structures, now the outcome for some people, that's not going to be for a lot, some of you may be feeling a little bit rigid and you feel a little bit um, as though you are boxed up um, because some people just like to, you know, be fancy free and some people do not want to tie themselves down whether this is business, whether this is family, um, anything like that, relationship. But the Hierophant is a number five. And with number five, we always have something coming in to bring in change. For those of you that are feeling restricted, right, there is a chance for something to take place because of the energies, the shifting energies. There is a chance that you may be freed. Now, because we've got the, in the um, environment position, we've got the fool. This is someone who is freeing themselves. They are beginning a new journey. They feel like they're really light and they're taking a risk. They are beginning something new. So some people are actually getting freed. And I think that their belief and their the trust in the universe and in the divine is going to help them begin a new journey, right? But I will come back to this card in a minute. Now, in the recent past, we have the Ten of Cups and it's in the reverse. For me, this goes back one step. We have not graduated to the Ten yet. Ten of Cups. Maybe there was a drawback recently um, to getting to the Ten of Cups, right? For me, this is not unhappiness. This is like not having graduated to the 10, you're still at the nine. So you're one step before. So for me, this is a nine of cups. You're on your way to success. You're on your way to the 10 of cups. Okay. But for some of you, it's going to take a bit longer than others. I will take another card on that and see what the drawback is. What the, could I say, pro procrastination? Some of you are, some, not all people are, willing to take the risk, the same risk as others. I believe that there is there is a necessity for risk taking right here. It's time to, you know, to throw the dice, try your luck, try something new. It's always best to move forward than to stay stagnant. So we have quite a few pentacles here, right? If we add these pentacles all together, here, we've got 11. Now, 11 for me, 11 is a, it, you know, it's a major number, but 11 is a new doorway as well. It's a brand new cycle beginning. 11 is also the number of justice, okay? Now, justice brings everything to a balance, brings fairness in. For some of you, it may be costing you some money. For those of you that are going through an up, unhappy family, going through divorce or a separation, and there's not a lot of that here. But for those few of you that you are going through something something like that because you have the, the stability card and the celebration card as the challenge, then this is something brand new. The universe has got something new for you, something that is more suited. Now, if we look at the two, 
The two of cups here, look at the top. It's in Roman numerals, right? It looks like an 11. Now, we have in the position of you, but this can be anyone in your in your life. This is a fire sign. So Sagittarius, Aries or Leo. He is in the upright, this king. So he's a leader. He is someone who's very spontaneous. He's going for what he holds dear to his heart, what sends that blood through the veins, what makes his heart tick. He's going for it. As you can see, he's very decisive. He's holding that wand and he's ready to use it, right? He's going to stand up to whoever or whatever tries to stand in his way. He's on his way, on his way to success. If this is business, he's in the right place at the right time, right? And he's a wonderful leader. Is If this is someone who is, you know, working for you, um, if this is your partner in your business, this is a really good person to have there. This is someone who knows how to call the shots. And success is the only word in his mind. Now, this can be a female, does not matter. But all I know is that he's very fiery. Um, and there's the passion is just, you know, over the top. There is only one thing that I want to advise with this energy here. If this is your energy, with Mars being retrograde, if you push and it's not working for you, just let it go. Give it a break. Get a bit, give it a bit of time. And another thing I wanted to mention is that Mercury is going retrograde tomorrow. So please take care. If there's anything that you need to sign, any new contracts, please look at the finer details. If you can hold off and not sign, do not do, do that. If you are redoing things, looking over things, things that you have begun in the past, then go for it. All I know is that with the Fool here in the environment position, there is a brand new beginning. Now the Fool is in the upright. This is a new journey. He's taking a risk. He's not looking ahead of him. He's taking that risk. And usually, most times, when we take a risk, yes, there are, you know, dangers ahead, but he knows what he's doing. This is a major arcana card. He's received the information from above. He's got the spiritual enlightenment. Look at that sun. Look at that sky. It's totally clear, right? All that yellow. That is a beautiful energy, right? Now, in the environment, um, sorry, in the hopes and fears, we've got the Eight of Pentacles in the reverse. What is the advice here? It says, don't overdo it with work, okay? Now, you are fearing, some of you may be fearing having too much on your plate. It is a very busy time. Um, others of you are fearing not having enough work, not having enough to do. Maybe the money is a bit scarce. It did start off well. In the near future, it's looking stable. It's looking quite, you know, quite good. But with the fear and hope being in the reverse, it's like we're going back to the Seven of Pentacles. So if this is dealing with work for you, um, it's as though you're stopping and looking at the situation where you're at and whether you need to stay on the same path or change, right? Is this working for you? Is the money coming in as it should be? Is, are you working too hard and not receiving enough is the question here. Now, if this is a relationship, if this is a relationship, some of you may be fearing that your partner may be not putting in enough work and that it's all one-sided. But this is a fear here, right? I still believe we're at the Seven of Pentacles here. Sevens are a number of the divine for me. Now, with the Hierophant being the outcome card. Wow, the Hierophant is the energy of Taurus. Taurus is the natural house in the natural zodiac. It's the house number two, right? It comes after Aries. Now, Taurus is the physical body. It is the five senses. It is what we value. It's our 
material things. That's what Taurus is all about. They're all about the comforts, all about the what they what do they value in their life. That's what they will keep. What they don't value, they will not look at twice because they have Uranus in their sign. Uranus is in Taurus and that's why we are having a lot of freaky weather. Things are happening unexpectedly. That's what Uranus is all about. It is the rebel, right? Uranus is like the tower for me. It breaks down unexpectedly. It's the universe taking charge and putting things straight. Know that whatever comes down, whatever comes down in your life, whatever shifts, it was meant to be. It's for your highest good. Just remember that for those of you that may be going through a bit of a tougher time, that's what's going on. Let me take some more cards. Now, with the world card in the now position, that is Saturnian energy, right? Saturn is where, um, Saturn, sorry, is in Capricorn. And Saturn is very, um, very rigid, very, um, yes, very grounding. Saturn is the old teacher, the, the old wise one who says that if you do not the right, if you don't do the right thing, you don't complete a cycle. So we're all going through lessons and we've all been through lessons, some of which are ending with this full moon and there are new beginnings on the horizon. But do know that whatever lessons and whatever cycle you have gone through, you are graduating to the next level. So spiritually, and I know this for sure, and a lot of you do as well, that um, people are spiritually growing. We are ascending as a um, as the human race moves closer into the time of Aquarius. There is a massive ascension for those people who are already aware and awake, and they're in touch with their highest highest purpose. We need to we need to um, Help others and try to wake others up. For those of you that are speaking your truth, this is it. This is a successful new beginning. This is the light bulb going on. Some of you may be actually cutting someone or something out. Whatever does not work in your life, this is the Ace of Swords. Okay? Air qualities, right? This is all about our intellect, what goes on in our mind. Okay, so this is the hand of the universe, right? For those of you that are having trouble getting out of difficult situations, this is the sword being handed to you, okay? We are not alone. We are not alone. We are guided by the divine, even those little synchronicities that, you know, that we see during our awakened times, other times in our sleep, we are given messages. We have to go by what we see, what we feel, and what we hear. Let's look at the world and the four of wands. Okay, and we've got the knight of wands. Now, the knight of wands is a fiery energy. This is more than likely Sagittarian qualities, if I may say so. Um, so we've got the Knight of Wands and we've got the King of Wands. Now, I would say that this is an action, right? This is movement. This is action-based in relation to what we feel passionate about. Some of you may be actually moving, right? Moving and the Knight of Wands can also be a very passionate knight. Some of you may be dealing with a younger fire sign, others of you with an older fire sign. And for others of you, this could be, and I'm moving this card here, it's easier to see in the screen. Um, some of you, there may be a maturation growth, like someone is growing here. The Knight of Wands is turning into the King of Wands, right? So this Knight of Wands can be, in a sense, like the player, let's say, in relation to love, right? This person may be going through their own 
um, maturation process where they are growing and turning into a king, becoming much more mature. And I do believe that whatever situations and cycles we go through, there is always growth there. Let's look at that Two of Cups. Now, the Knight of Wands, if we have Sagittarian energy, again, Sagittarius is the ninth house, foreign places, foreign people, people at a distance. Um, it's also standing in our truth. Let's look at that Two of Cups. And we've got the Page of Wands. Isn't that amazing? The Page of Wands can be a message, a passionate message, which comes in something that lights your fire, something that will bring change to you. Now the we've got the Page, then we've got the Knight, and then we've got the King. That is a lot of fire. So fire signs, and it's not only Sagittarius, any fire sign we're talking about here now. Um, the Page of Wands is the very abundant page, right? Quite a um, quite a royal sort of a character. Now, this is the minor arcana of the fool for me. So this is taking a risk. It, you could be sending a message or you could be receiving a message, one that is going to bring in, in creativity and inspiration. Now, for others of you, this can be an adolescent son, more than likely, um, that is going through a growing process. They may be needing to move. They may be going to the army. I don't know why that message came through, but that came through. And I'm going to look at the Ten of Cups. Why is the Ten of Cups in the reverse? Spirit Guides and Angels. Ten of Cups in the reverse. What does that mean in the recent past? And we've got the Four of Pentacles. So the Four of Pentacles is holding on tightly to something, something that is very important to us. We feel as though we can't get to it. It's as though we're trying. To, it, we've got something. We've got the prize right ahead of us right in front of us. We're grabbing for it and it's just moving further away. Do you feel that? Um, this is what this card is all about. It is a four. So something is very close at hand, but we're not quite there yet. Now for me, this is Taurian energy. This could also speak of a lack of finances, a lack of income, but also this could be minding your heart taking care of your heart, taking care of your family, okay, and maybe saving up for the future if this is financial as well. Feeling as though you don't have enough, just when you think you're almost there, you've lost it and there's more, you have to put more effort in. That's what I feel with this card. Let's see what the Six of Swords is, the general energy. Where are we moving to? Some of you may be moving away from an air sign. So Aquarius, Gemini or Libra. And we've got the Gemini card in the reverse. So some of you may be moving away from a Gemini. Some of you are breaking karmic cycles. This is, you know, a karmic relationship it's in the reverse so for some of you you've already made up your decision you are moving away it's a number six again so if we look back let's say it's a major arcana we go back to the hierophant so some of you have made up your decision others you others of you I'm sorry will be making up your mind to leave a karmic relationship one where there was a lack of balance Now I'm going to take a card on the Queen of Pentacles. This is the f near future position. And we've got the Two of Wands. Okay, again Sagittarian energy. Look at the World Ball. 
So matters to do with foreign places and people. This is a brand new doorway opening. Some of you are making a decision. A decision because you've got a choice of two things. So you are choosing one. One that may be at a distance. Now in business this is a brand new door opening. Another two. As I said there's an agreement. Some of you may be choosing between two people. So we've got all the signs here practically. Mainly fire and earth. Okay, mainly fire and earth. We do have a little bit of um, a few cups, but mostly we are talking about fire and earth, right? So, and if you look at these cards here, we've got this voyager, this person who's getting ready to take a trip, looking across at the four of wands, which is and if we look at the four with the two together, it adds up to the six of wands. So you are hoping to be successful and balanced, whether this is business, family, or love. Okay. Now, I'm going to look at this king of wands. Wow. Okay, King of Swords in the reverse. For some of you, as I said, you may be choosing between two people. They could have Earth, Air, or Fire. Now, you may be dealing with a Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. We've got the Gemini card here, but for the for me, the King of Swords, it's for me, the King of Swords. Sorry, would be an Aquarius more strongly. Now, the King of Swords is in the reverse. Usually when he's in the upright, he's someone who's very fair. He can be very um, very judgmental, especially being in the reverse, right? It says that he's been unfair, his words can cut. Okay, so some of you may be closing the door on an air sign and opening the door on a fire sign. For others of you, and this is for a small amount of you, we could have one person who's very fiery, like the, we've got air and fire, right? Air and fire. Now, if you think about it, Mars is in Aquarius. Aquarius is air. Hold on a second. Sorry about that interruption. I was just saying that we've got fire and air. Um, Mars is retrograde in Aquarius. Aquarius is an air sign. Mars is fiery and being in the, you know, going backwards in the sky, it, there can be a lot of aggressiveness here. Now, could this be one person who's two-sided? Could this be someone who shows both qualities? Now, air and fire together can be very, very explosive, very explosive. And I don't know if you heard the news um, in Greece the, the bushfires there, so many people have died. They've been, um, so many people have lost their lives. It would have been, must be over 75 people. Um, they tried to get away from the bushfires and they got trapped. Um, they were at the edge of the cliff. There was 26 people that died all together. They hugged each other. They, they were in such a trap that they could not move. And there was a lot of wind, you know. This is what this takes me back to. Very, very tragic. And this is exactly with uh, the Uranian energy. Uranus is all about unexpected, you know, uh, difficult weather conditions. Mars retrograde could speak of fire. It's just uncanny how astrology works. Astrology shows us things. But yes, as I was saying, um, the King of Wands and the King of Swords, for some of you, these are two different people. For a very small amount of you, you've got someone who is bipolar, someone who is two-sided. One minute they're like this, the next they're like that. So do take care with this energy. For some of you, this could be a solicitor, one who is probably... Uh, I don't know if this is your partner, this King of Wands, this solicitor could be someone who is very unjust, so do take care. If you are employing an attorney, 
Just take care with who you choose. And as I said, look over the information with Mercury retrograde. Go over the details again. Now, what is external to you is the Fool. Okay, so beginning something new. Let's take another card on that. Here we are. Okay, and we've got the Death card in the reverse. The Death card being in the upright would say that something is changing. It is time for it to finish. Something is not working anymore, so the universe takes it away and brings something new, puts it in its place. Being in the opposite, though, it says that it's there is still a lingering um, energy here. The death card in the reverse says that you have not graduated to that yet. So this has not taken place yet. This is a 13, uh, which would go back to the hanged man. So there is a sense of holding on and waiting and having difficulty because the hanged man would be some sort of a sacrifice. It looks as though before this can happen, and especially with Jupiter and Scorpio, Jupiter is going direct now, but for some of you this has not taken place yet. You're still in the, um, still hanging in the midst for something and this lingering energy to, you know, stop following you. I feel as though some of you really want to move away from this energy here. Look at that. Now, for others of you, I believe that when this is turned upright, that's when you're going to take that flying leap of faith, okay? So this could speak of time, some sort of procrastination here. Um, let's take let's take a card on this hierophant. And we've got the Queen of Wands in the reverse. Queen of Wands in the reverse can be someone who is very egotistical, someone who is, um, there is too much passion, uh, which turns into anger. I would take care with this person. If this is someone who is in your life that you are hoping to, um, to get away from, then the advice is do so, because the with the hierophant here, with the hierophant here, she feels as though she's trapped and she can retaliate. Whoever this is in your life, now we've got the Queen of Wands and we've got the King of Wands. So for some of you, when I have when I have the King of Wands and I've got the Queen of Wands, this is a couple, right? Now, the King of Wands is in the upright, which would say that he is standing in his integrity, okay? Unless he is this double-sided person, then yes, beware. But if these are two different people, it looks as though this King of Wands, and this could be your energy, this could be your energy, it could be your partner, it's a general reading. I do feel as though this Queen of Wands has been, has felt trapped in a committed partnership, anything to do with what keeps her not being able to move forward. She's a free spirit. She is someone who is very, you know, she will think and she will act. She cannot stay stagnant. She needs to go for what her heart wants. Fiery energy, it's fire. You cannot stop it. You cannot, um, you cannot stop this person from acting or overreacting, right? This person cannot be caged up. So whoever this is in your life, do not think that this person can stay in in a structure where she feels overburdened, where she feels like she cannot move forward, okay? Now, there is a sense of when someone is in the reverse, when the king or queen are in the reverse, 
It's either that they are not capable of, in this case, lead, or they are not capable of being smothered, I want to say, smothered like being told what to do. She's a leader. She's a leader and she will not stay beneath someone else. She needs to lead. She's a free spirit. And when I say free spirit, Sagittarian energy again. Okay, that's what I feel here. So we've got two kings and two queens here. So this queen may be, and I feel as though they're two different people. One is a very grounded energy, very nurturing. The other one is like over the top. She's just, she could be a spoiled brat. She could be someone who will not take no for an answer, right? And very, very strong passive aggressiveness, I feel, here. And if she is someone who's very spoilt, doesn't look like she's getting what she wants. Let's see another card. <laughs> okay, the devil. So this is the energy of Capricorn. What did I say about the Hierophant? If she feels as though she's boxed up, she's stuck, and she may be stuck in something that is very sexual, something that is very materialistic, she may be just out too much for the money, too much for things that she can gain. And she may even be in the reverse because she is she is too drawn in by this devil energy. Now, as I said, the devil can be restrictions. It can be anything to do with, um, you, you know, drug using, alcohol too much, overeating, over binging, going out and partying too much. But with the Hierophant and the devil here, it feels as though she's not able to commit. That's what I feel. Okay, she's a free spirit and she will not settle to be caged in and to be directed and told what to do. Okay, now with the devil, um, the devil is a very difficult energy to get away from. Okay, it is a very, as I said, materialistic energy. It's, you know, very physical, too much work, too much play, too much of, of anything, too much, even too much sex here. Okay, let's have a look at this Ten of Pentacles and see what that is in the, it's the root of the issue. Things to do with money, things to do with family, things to do with business. And we've got the sun. The sun is an illuminary. The sun is clarity. It is the sign of Leo. Leo is where the eclipses have been happening, right? Maybe the eclipse has changed your financial situation. For some of you, this could be your family growing because the card of Leo always speaks of children, lucky games, um, anything creatively that you have begun. Also, it is a you know, the fifth house, the, the house of Leo, is also the house of gambling, the house of lucky games, trying your luck. It's also the house of true love. So for some of you, maybe something has begun. For others of you, this could be, you know, growing your family. Um, this could also be something that is very near and dear to you in relation to money, family, business right? The Sun card can also be a card of healing. Let's look at the Sibelas. I would like to look at this, um, the now position with the Knight of Wands, the World card, and the Four of Wands as the challenge. Okay, we've got Consolante Supresa, which is like Uranian energy. Something unexpected. Something comes unexpected to you. And 
it does show money here so something lovely unexpected comes in to bring in celebration right for some of you this could be at a distance though you need to travel to, to get lucky then we have the Gran Consolazione which is it's like the Ten of Pentacles right it's Ten of Cups everything that you need is here and you are on top of the world in relation to that now here we've got the pensiero which is like the hermit this could be a solicitor a doctor anything to do with it even reminds me of the um, the hermit going within becoming enlightened receiving the information uh, getting in touch with your higher self is going to get you to this position now for some of you this is spiritual growth that's what it's all about you are growing spiritually going through a growth spurt and sometimes that can be the abundance that you want and that you need now the melancholia fell on top of the um, sun card and the family the ten of pentacles this is melancholy let's see what else is going to come out here for those of you that have had difficulty in falling pregnant it looks as though there's a sense of healing maybe you went through some sort of loss any anything to do with family anything to do with children let's see for some of you this could be healing through the family discrazia is the tower now this is something sudden right and then we've got la mante which is the romeo this is the male lover of course it can go either way male or female but this is someone serenading you now this came in suddenly right suddenly loves come in you have the clarity and the healing after being depressed for whatever reason this is beautiful energy here but with the Sun card of course the depression is being lifted okay um, for some of you maybe your family did not agree on your partner on your new new partner maybe that's why you felt um, like psychologically you're not happy not at the right place and then suddenly smack bang there is a change okay uh, let's look at those two of cups with the page of wands we have the merchant this is an agreement in business anything to do with import export this is an entrepreneur here so this could be an offer of work an offer of a contract coming in in business and you may be taking a risk now with the Sun being in Leo at the moment I would say it's the right time to take a risk Leo is all about risks now the woman lover something precious this is like the Queen of Wands let's say okay she's holding something very important in her hand something very precious and then we have deliriousness delirante for me this card speaks of support sometimes when it's too good to be true we can be delirious sometimes this can speak of silly actions but I would say more than likely here it's deliriousness from the contract that is coming in let's look at uh, the fool with the death card in the reverse So we have the militare which is like the soldier that is going to climb that mountain he's on a mission okay now this may be an uphill battle but he's got the ability to climb that mountain right it's something that's not easy right omaggio di preziosi it's the precious gift and stanza the news is coming in now news can be in relation to things that have been hidden because the soldier keeps secrets 
secrets in relation to something that is very valuable to them and the news is coming in now this does deal with intimacy as well so what this these three cards together are telling me that there will be some sort of a transformation a transformation even though it's not an easy place to be in there is much to gain now let's look at these kings king of wands king of swords in the reverse we've got the sospiri which is like the three of wands whatever you have sent out whatever ships you've sent out you are waiting and hoping that they will come back we've got alegria which is merriment happiness going out letting your hair down and then we've got fortuna which is like the wheel of fortune now the wheel of fortune does remind me of jupiter jupiter can speak of legal matters as well so <clears throat> generally <coughs> excuse me generally the fortuna is a very positive card right so whatever is happening whatever is happening with this king of swords jupiter is here now jupiter is the benefic right and it does expand for some, for those of you that are dealing with a negative person it can expand to the point where you you think you're going to break okay something's got to give as we say but generally jupiter is a very positive and wonderful energy now the hierophant the devil and the queen of wands in the reverse now we could be talking about siblings the queen of wands could be a fire sign with a the queen of pentacles being another earth sign and we've got king of wands and king of swords these could be four siblings dealing with anything to do with family situations family money and family business so we've got the namika which is the female enemy she's taking off that mask she is showing her true colors this queen of wands now if this is an energy and she's showing up in the reverse she's going through a difficult time vedovor the widower crying over the past being stuck in the past and then we've got the donna de servizio which is like the energy of virgo the servant the helper the good energy so we've got two females an older female which is taking off her mask a younger female which is very helpful and a male in the middle who is stuck in his past so for those of you that have been dealing with a difficult person one that was not showing themselves it's time to show themselves right and you're going to have support in getting over getting over that devil energy let's look at the general energy the six of swords and the gemini card the lovers the lovers in the reverse we have the conversazione pleasant conversations around a table around family around co-workers allegres al cuore which is happiness of the heart and then we have the viaggio so the viaggio is someone coming in a visitor this is like the knight in shining armor but this could be a visitor which is coming into the family and there's going to be a lot of support and a lot of help for those of you that are traveling to go and meet family overseas this is going to be great absolutely wonderful okay news is coming in news is coming in someone is coming from afar this is Sagittarian energy okay and there's going to be a lot of celebration here with family and a lot of support for some of you this could be you moving away actually moving away right okay moving away from difficult energy you've made your decision and you are moving away from a karmic cycle 
and you're going to live the um, single life for a while, which is going to behoove you. Let me just look at this Queen of Pentacles with the two, two of Wands. Okay, we've got two cards that fill out. Let me take one more. Okay. Oh, we've got three cards that fill out. Is that? No. Two. Okay, so we had the Amalato, which is the low morale. Then we've got the Il Namiko, which is the snake. This is a difficult energy, right? But look at look at it here. Let's say that um, this person looks as though they're running away. Now, they've obviously done something here. It's as though they've they've um, they've done something wrong. They've they've hurt this person psychologically. I would say, more than likely, um, he's holding a snake, which is like having a snake in your in the grass, right? So do take care. Now this can be an energy, and not a person, but then keeping the faith with the um, the sacerdote keeping your belief system uh, intact, having the faith or having someone who's going to advise you to help you get through this difficult energy is going to actually bring in the transformation. This snake, this snake is the one that sheds its skin, right? It brings in change. Now, with this sacerdote, if this was low morale, like you're think, you were thinking that it's not going to happen, what I've been trying and working hard for is not coming in, then keeping the faith is going to really bring it in. I mean, this is like the priest, right? It does deal with spirituality, yes, of course. As I said, we are going through a growth spurt spiritually. The sacerdote can also be a marriage, you know, the promise of marriage. So, okay, I'm going to take a card, one card for each sign from the Doreen Virtue. Love Oracle. So we can see for each sign what we're talking about, what we're looking at. Around this time of the eclipse and for the next six months. Please do not forget that. Okay, Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel, Spirit Guides, Angels, Universe. I would like to take one card for each sign in relation to love and romance and family. For the energy of the eclipse, the full moon lunar eclipse, of the 27th of July 2018 and for the next six months. Okay, I thought I was going to drop a card. Okay, so I'm going to take one card for each sign and we start off with Aries. Okay, Aries. We've got worth waiting for. Divine timing is at work in your love life. The angels have not taken flight yet. Okay. Taurus, we've got romantic feelings. Your feelings are real and worth exploring. So this sounds very lovey-dovey. Yeah. Beautiful beginnings. Gemini, separation. Time apart from your partner is on the horizon. For some of you, this is separation from a committed, you know, or a long-term partnership. For others of you, you may be just at a distance. People do travel. So there is a time of separation. Okay, for each and every person, it is going to be different. Cancer. Let go of control issues. Allow this situation to unfold naturally. Let the universe take over, dear Cancer. Okay, it's out of your hands. It's in the hands of the universe. Leo, we've got retreat. It is time to disconnect from the world. It looks like they're going on a honeymoon, taking time out, 
and spending together. This is beautiful. Virgo, we have attraction. You attract romantic love by enjoying this moment fully, especially with Venus being in your sign. You are going to be very attractive, dear Virgos. Libra, make the effort. Great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take. And it does show children here there is a sense of innocence. Children may be in the way, so it's saying make the effort with your romantic partner. Scorpio, we have pay attention to the red flags. The signs are cautioning you. Just do take care, dear Scorpio. There are signs which are showing you the way. Just pay attention to those and go by what you feel is right. Sagittarius, codependency, oh my God. Addictions are affecting your romantic life. Codependency, that is the devil energy. Sorry, Sagis. Codependency says that if you guys are in a codependent um, relationship and there are different stages and different scales, you need to be a little bit more a little bit more authentic to be yourself and not to get tied up, right? Don't let this get too, like, too harsh, okay? If you feel as though you are dealing with someone who is trying to pull your strings, then it's time to let go, okay? You are a free spirit and you will not take that crap. And then we have, after Sagittarius, we have <clears throat> Capricorn, Oh my God, deception. Someone is wearing a false self mask in this relationship. Dear Capricorn, again, there are different stages of wearing masks. We all wear them. It's time to show yourself to be your true self. That way it will rub off on the other person. Okay? So it's saying that you need to be open. You need to be true. And if they stick around, they do. If they don't, good riddance. Right? Now, if, this, if you feel that this is your partner, then it's time to be open with them. And if they will not open up with you, then it's time to go. Next, we have Aquarius. Forgiving and learning. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments. So some of you are getting over issues and forgiving your partner. And through forgiving you, you are going through a lesson. Okay, so you need to release and heal, by, let bygones be bygones and um, open your heart to, to love, okay, you need to open your heart. Whenever we have a closed up heart and we keep hatred and, you know, the past, it does not work. You, you can not stay there. You can't stay there because there is nothing good coming in. Okay, dear Aquarius, so you need to learn to trust, okay? Trusting and forgiving is, first of all, is going to heal your heart and then the other people. And last but not least, we have Pisces. It is safe for you to love, dear Pisces. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. Okay, so that is practically the same message that I was saying to Aquarius open your heart for everyone. I think that we all have to have an open heart. Okay, it is the time of Leo. Leo, Leo is ruled, <coughs> excuse me, I've still got a cold. Leo is ruled by the heart. And Leo is the heart. So let's take from the mythic oracle, dear people, The Divine Message. Let's see what it's going to be. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I've been talking way too long. Spirit Guides and Angels, one card. Oh, goodness me. I just went on a coughing rampage, coughing attack. I just could not stop coughing and I had to make myself a cup of tea. Sounds like this is a very important message. 
one that I could not give to you but I insist you need to take this message and I have this is the first time that I'm using <coughs> the mythic or oracle let's see one card spirit guides and angels what is the message okay almost there Eclipse energies, dear universe, spirit guides and angels. Doesn't look like they want to give it to me. I need to choose the, the message. Okay. Oh, wow. Hermes. Messages. This is Mercury. This is Hermes, which was um, the messenger, right? It's a number 26, which adds up to an 8. This is the House of Scorpio. It's also the Strength card. Let's see. That is beautiful. And it's funny because <coughs> Mercury is going retrograde. So let's see what it says. Okay, this is the myth. Hermes is the son of Zeus and nymph Maia. He is an extremely clever trickster by nature and is known as the divine messenger. And this is a divine message, as I said, right? Delivering the messages of Zeus. He is the guide of souls traveling to the underworld and the afterlife, which is the realm of Hades. He wears wings on his hat heralds wand and sandals. He is the divine trickster, messenger and god of travellers. He also invented the lyre, a musical instrument. Now Hermes creates the bridge of communication between the worlds. He is the link between God and man, between the heavens, earth and the underworld. He is known as a trickster, thief at the gates, watcher in the night and the bringer of dreams. Of all the Greek gods and goddesses, only Hermes, Hades and Persephone have the ability to travel freely in and out of the underworld. That's it. Okay. So it's got to do with the underworld. That's where uh, Jupiter is, right? In Scorpio, in the underworld, messages are going to come in. Now this is messages coming in, being able to fr uh, move freely and also be careful of the trickster, be careful of miscommunication with Mercury in retrograde mode, remember? Okay, so if you're needing to do something special, something important, do take care and do that after the 20th of August, right? All right, people, I think that's the message that will do. I do hope that you're all safe and sound and happy and that the energies of the eclipse are going to be quite easy and you can just breeze through them. Sending you love and blessings to all of you. Do take care. I will be back soon. Bye for now.